Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for that good response. As Pastor Gerald said, we love to celebrate here, so we're going to get started and jump straight into some celebrations. Uh, I'm looking forward to the testimonies that are going to come before you, and so I'm not going to give you a big introduction about them, but I'm going to let them speak for themselves. So if uh, Terrence and Taylor and Denzel can make their way up, they're just going to share with us some of the fruit that they have seen from using the tools and uh, just the experiences that they've had at their tables. So why don't you guys go ahead and come on up? And let's welcome them as they come. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Right here. She's going to tell you her name, and then we're going to say her name back. We're going to say, hi, Taylor, and then we're going to remember. And then remember, we're going to celebrate what the Lord is doing. We're going to do more than clap. We're going to make some noise. So this is your time to get a little silly in church. Don't miss it. Oh, my goodness. Hi, my name is Taylor Dunlap. Hi, Taylor. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Wow. Um, yeah, it feels so good and warm. Um, yes. So I guess I'll be sharing a testimony um, of someone who is very dear to me. Um, and it has to do with the vehicle of the prayer calendar. And so the first week, um, as a leader here, I've had the opportunity to go through this training before the church. And so I kind of already knew what he was going to ask or be required of when he started to talk about the prayer calendar. What I wasn't expecting him to do, uh, because we were kind of towards the end of the month, so I'm like, oh, he's telling us about the prayer calendar, and then we'll start it March 1, and that's great or whatever. And he's like, okay, right now I want you to get your phone out. <laughs> And I want you to text whoever your said person is on today. Now, what was interesting about that uh, was that the person that I had on that day, and we're just going to call him T out of just respect for my relationship and just in case. Um, so for that day, um, well, let's go back to writing down the 30, 30 unsaved people. Um, I just started to pray, and I asked the Lord who he wanted me to highlight. And when it came to T, I hadn't talked to T in a while. I grew up with T since he was uh, very young, uh, maybe about five years old. Uh, we grew up in church together. We did a lot of dance um, ministry together. And so when he brought T to mind, I was like, whew, okay. And the reason why is because T is in a lifestyle of homosexuality. He is married to a man at this present moment. Um, and so T was the person of the day. And so I was like, wow, you really are pushing me into this. And so I got onto social media and I reached out and I said, hey, I started this prayer calendar. The Lord placed you on my heart to pray for you. Um, would you mind being on my prayer calendar? And he immediately texted me back and he said, you have no idea how you are sent prayer from God. He then proceeds to go, hey, do you still have my number? And I was like, is it the same? He was like, of course. So I reach out to him and I said, when I get home from church, I'm going to, I'm going to call you and then we can pray. And so of course I'm going home and I'm like, Lord, like, I don't know what you want to say. I don't know what you, how you want me to approach this. And the Lord was like, come to me in prayer and I will give you strategy. And a lot of my anxiety wasn't necessarily around my relationship with T. It was more about how I feel the church approaches LGBTQ agenda, period. Um, and how we make people identify as homosexual before they identify as a person. And so I asked the Lord, when I speak to T, I want to hear what you're saying to T and not me trying to pray something for T because it's very visible that, that this thing is here. 
Um, my friend, he wears women's clothing, he wears acrylics, so it's very out there. Um, and so I wanted to be very serious, and I remember getting in prayer and just feeling the fear of the Lord, and the Lord being like, this is what I want you to pray over him. Now, what's interesting is I began to weep, and um, he's like, hey, Taylor, I'm headed to my job. Um, do you mind sending me a voice recording? And so I ended up just rocking and praying, and the specific prayer over him was, the Lord is calling you back to a heart of worship, that you have a heart of worship, that your ministry to the Lord is near and dear to him, and he misses that, and he wants to encounter you. And he wants to, to contend and speak to you and communicate with you. And from this place, all of this worship towards him is going to come back to him. And um, he was like, I said, this is a safe place through this prayer with me. This is going to be a safe place for you to encounter God again because you have had a lot of fear of coming back into the church to worship God. And... Uh, and I said, the Lord is not even, he's seeking his son. Yeah. And so I said, the Lord is seeking you to come and, and be before him. Now, this is hilarious because I'm like super sober like I am right now, crying. I'm speaking in tongues on here. And he sends me a voice memo back. <laughs> and he goes, girl, uh, you, I had to step outside of my, oh my God, you are all in my business. Oh my, oh, I got to call you. I got to, I got to, he was like, listen, I don't know what I need to do, but baby, I got to touch your hands when you pray for me. Like, I don't want these voice memos and I don't want these phone calls. I want to get with you and I want you to pray with me in person because I miss worship. I miss being in his presence. I miss that. But it's so, because of the way that I choose to live my life, it's very hard to come and encounter God. And he was like, you just, you're speaking everything that the Lord has been calling my spirit to. And so he was like, I need this in my life. I just have a really bitter heart. I have a really hard trauma with this. And um, I just want to be committed to us praying together. And of course, my mouth is open because I'm just like, Lord. And it was just in that moment that the Lord was like, I'm calling sons and daughters. The fruit of what they're in is not your business. If you can call, if you can lift me up, I will draw them to me and I will do all of the work that comes with it. I just need you to be committed to the person and how they show up and celebrate them and enjoy them. And as you champion them to get in my face, you're going to start to see a transformation happen. And so please keep teeing your prayers. He is so lively, y'all. <laughs> he is uh, in his heart slowly being tenderized, and it is just always a joy to be with him and um, to even encourage his partner, who is now being open to the gospel, because he's like, who is this woman you're praying with? And um, I am just really excited about what the Lord is doing in that way. Please keep me in prayer. Um, I really do feel called to LGBTQIA in a way that just allows people to be loved on by the Lord and the Lord do the work. And so uh, it intimidates people when people show up as themselves. But I'm so excited that I know the Lord is doing a work within him. And eventually the Lord will transform in the way that he sees fit. And so um, keep teeing your prayers. Yeah. Hey, how's it going, buddy? Dan, Danzel is my name, so. Hi, Dan. I appreciate it. Thanks. Um, I have two quick testimonies. So, I mean, I have two testimonies, so I'll try to keep it quick. Um, the first one was, happened like a month ago, um, the prayer calendar. Um, I had my coworker on my prayer calendar, and um, basically, 
I pray for him. I sent him a text. I said, hey, I'm praying for you. Anything you need prayer for? And at that, as soon as I sent the text, him and his wife were in like a huge like blowout argument, what he was telling me, because I worked with him the, the very next day. And he's like, hey, man, he's like, me and my wife were in a huge blowout argument. You sent that text, and my wife saw the text come to my phone. And he's like, and it like immediately just stopped everything. He's like, we were able to kind of just just like recon, recon, like reconcile essentially. And we worked the next day. He was like, he, he's, 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 he's like, what led you to pray for me? And uh, I was like, um, well, my church has been teaching this prayer calendar. Um, so I, I drew out the prayer calendar. For, I mean, yeah, the prayer calendar for me. And he was like, what in the world? He's like, how do you find time to do this? So one tool led into the other tool. So I showed him the, uh, the, uh, the UTC calendar. And it was right. like. So, and then he was, he was like, he's like, oh, man, he's like, this is all happening at your church? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, oh, snap. So I was able to do it at, at, at work, which was, I was kind of nervous about that, but I was still able to do it at work. So that was the first testimony, which was a blessing. And, uh, yeah. and the uh, second one was actually at work as well, too. Um, this past Tuesday, I'm working. It was, Wednesday, it was Tuesday, I think I was working on site. Um, I was just going through a lot of intense personal stuff these past two weeks um and usually like my my self-image my self-talk is like really really good but this past Tuesday it was like in a really terrible state and I was just like talking down to myself in a very extremely negative way and um I remember the um um Chris went through the identity Christ model so I had my notebook in my car so I went out and, and I got my notebook I went back on site and I was reading the, the identity of Christ model just because I was like I was I was like really like struck struggling bad on on Tuesday, and um, I'm going through the identity of Christ model and my coworker who just got hired it was a different coworker he comes up to me and he was like he and he and he, he's like, he said hey man what in the world is that I was like oh I was like oh I was like I was like it's just it's just some, it's just something personal I'm doing it's just because I was like in a very like emotional state and then he was like hey he's like he's like is that a is that is that scripture and I was like yeah and he he's, 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 he's like he's oh man he's like can can you show it to me and I was like. <laughs> And in my head, I'm like, bro, I'm, I didn't say this to him, but I'm, like, I'm in such a, like, a negative state right now. And in my head, I'm like, I'm not trying to be communicating with anybody. <laughs> and, and he was like, and he was like, and I was, like, and I was telling him, I was, I was like, hey, man, if I'm being honest, I was, I was like, it's really, it's, really, it's really busy at work. I was like, so I'm not really trying to, I was like, I don't know if it's best time. And he, he's, he's, like, he's like, what time do you go on lunch? I was like, noon. He's like, he's like, he's like hey, man. He's like, he's, like, he's like, if we go on lunch at noon, he's, he's like, I can go on lunch at noon with you, and then we can go through it. And I was like, and I was like, okay, okay. So we go on lunch, and we start going through that Danny Christ model, and I'm showing it. And I was nervous the whole time. I wasn't nervous. I was like, what's the word, Pessa, pessimistic? I was pessimistic the whole time going through. But I showed him my lunch, and he's like, man, I've been in church for 20 years. And he's like a piano or drummer. He does something with worship. He's like, I've been in church for 20 years. And he's like, and I've never thought about my identity like in, in, in Christ ever once. So he said he, he took a picture of it, and he said he was going to show his church on wow. t- today, today, actually. He said he was going to show his church today. So that was a blessing. And um, I was uh, reading in uh, Hebrews, and the scripture stood out to me, basically. Hebrews chapter 3, verses 14 through, uh, what is it, 16? It says, so then since we have a great high priest, obviously Pastor Gerald's going through the the priesthood training, but so then since we have a great high priest who has entered heaven, Jesus, the son of God, let us hold firmly to what we believe. This high priest of ours understands our weaknesses, for he faced all of them. The, he faced all of them, same testings we do, yet he did not sin. So let us come boldly to the throne of the gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. So I was just um, in that moment. I was like, okay. It doesn't matter the emotional or the mental state that I'm currently in. These tools do not, the, the effectiveness of these tools do, do not, do not, are not based on my emotional and my mental state. It's like the, um, the, 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 the power of God, I feel like I'm shaking just talking about this, but the, 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 the effectiveness of this tool is based strictly on, uh, on, on the power of God. And it showed me Jesus understands my, my, my weaknesses, but the fact that I came to him, I came to him trying, trying to get over my stuff. His power just like a must through a company that I'm not gonna name it, but they aren't the most fond of God that that, that I work at. But um, when I came to him, bold to the grace, it showed me that these tools, like I said, they're not based on my emotional, my mental state. They're only based on the power of God. And God, he he just reminded me how much power is in these tools. So 
it was a great testimony. So now two of my co co coworkers now, they're um, from what they would tell me, they're a lot more dedicated dedicated with Christ now because of you. So awesome. Morning, family. Uh, my name's Terrence. I haven't got to know most of you yet, so uh, thanks, Christopher. <laughs> but before I start and I, I share, I want to take a moment to actually celebrate Christopher. He shared this about six weeks ago that what we're doing now and we've been doing for the last six weeks is something that the Lord's been working on with him and through him for the last 10 years. So I just, Christopher, thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for your obedience. Thank you for answering the call to help us learn to do something that we were commanded to do, and nobody else has done it. Thank you for stepping up. Oh. Grab my composure here. Thank you. So now it's time to celebrate all of you. My wife and I started going here. We met Lauren and Gerald not quite a year ago. Uh, through Clayton, and we come to the ministry there with deliverance and spent some time with them and got to know them. And since I've started well, about six weeks ago, I don't know any of you. I've met a few of you here and there. My wife has met a few of you here and there. She's not with us today. She's in West Virginia. Um, but over the last six weeks, I've had a different group at the table every week. I get Ella joined me for the second time this week. Um, however, as I've sat here, I've listened to all of you. Some of you know each other. Some of you don't. But yet, when you sit down, you begin to share. It's like family from years. You've known each other. You know each other. You know each other's stories. That, whether you realize it or not, even with the tools that Christopher is sharing with us, that's discipleship. Yeah. That's family. It doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter what you've been through. You guys are doing discipleship, whether you realize it or not. Now you're being trained on how to share it with other people, not just the ones inside this wall. So keep doing what you're doing because that's the testimony. It's what I'm seeing here of a group of people that I really don't know. Thank you. Weren't those good? Yeah, let's celebrate the Lord one more time, please. Amen. So now we're going to give you some time to share with one another, and we're going to go into our kickoff time. As a reminder, our kickoff time is a time of questions and accountability that's designed to give you opportunity to catch up with one another and see how the week has been both personally and as it relates to the tools, um, we're going to go through our hand mo movements this week as a reminder of what the kickoff questions are. So if you'll get your hands ready to join me, our five questions are up, say up, up. Down. down, around, down. out, and in. Awesome. Good job, guys. Up is what you're thankful for. Uh, down is, has to do with the low part of your week, what's been difficult or discouraging. And you want to follow up by asking the, your partner what would help make it better. Again, you may or may not be able to step into that, but your only role and your only responsibility is love. To lovingly ask them um, how you might be able to serve them, if not eat, just pray for them. The around question has to do with needs around that individual in their particular community. And th that question helps us to be outward focused and not just inward focused. So not just focusing on what's going on in our own lives or in the life of the person in front of you, but the lives of the people outside of this room and outside of this immediate circle. The out has to do with how you're doing with going out and sharing these tools. And the in has to do with reflecting inward with how you're doing and fulfilling your I will statements from each of um, the pillars. So I'm going to release you now to have your time of discussion. Uh, if you 
uh, were not here last week, try to partner up with somebody who was. And if you guys need any help at all in the process, your table host can help. All right, feel free to break up into groups of two. And we'll put a five minute timer on the board when uh, to help you guys with your pacing. This is one of my favorite parts and I love just to see um, all the community that happens at these tables, the interaction that happens at these tables. Typically when we're at church, we're sitting shoulder to shoulder. So it's very rare that we get to make eye contact with people who are our brothers and sisters. And so when I think of a family, when I think of church uh, or the church gathering, I think about a family reunion. And when I think about a family reunion, I think about sharing space together at a table and direct interaction and conversation. And so I, that's why I feel like these times are so, so precious for us. And I'm thankful that the Lord has made space uh, like this for our community. Well, we are going to take a look at our foundational passage. Again, if I were sitting down with you in the living room or at a coffee shop, every time we'd get together, we'd come back to this one verse to show where everything that we're doing, um, specific as it relates to the pillars, is flowing out of. We know that everything that we do as followers of Jesus should flow out of the great commandment and out of the great commission but in our attempt to respond to the Great Commission effectively uh, and in a way that um, produces fruit and is able to be reproduced, uh, we're using tools that are based on six pillars that Mark highlights in Mark 3, 13 through 15. So we're going to put that passage on the board. And again, if we were together, we would read it twice. I would read it once, then I would have you read it once, or if it were in a, gr a group setting, there would be two people in the group who would read it. Uh, but in this setting, we're going to read it collectively aloud. So I will start reading uh, the passage just to help with our pacing. And then I will turn off my microphone so the voice in the room is the loudest voice that we hear. Ready? Let's read. And he went up on the mountain... Mark 3, 13 through 15. Excellent. So our third pillar comes from the phrase, they came to him. They came to him. What Mark is doing is he's highlighting the obedience of those who responded to the call. Jesus called a lot of people, but not everybody obeyed and came. And so the title of our pillar today is called Obey Christ. And it looks like this. Well, kind of. <laughs> Every week I have to navigate how much info to put on the board um, because I really do want you all to have the experience of going through it. Uh, but you give me a board of information, I'm going to start writing before you even start talking because um, that's just my nature. So I'm going to walk you through this, but this is the framework that we're going to work through. If we were sitting down and I would just to open up my notebook, obviously all of this information would be here. So within your notebook, see some of you are writing even as I'm talking. Uh, that's okay. <laughs> if, we were, if you were looking at my personal notebook, all of this would be there and filled out, and that's what it would be for you, when you're sitting down with someone and you open up your notebook, everything obviously would be already filled out, but th there's that personal interaction and engagement where they're not gonna just start writing and drawing because you're sitting next to one another. So in this passage, or in this tool rather, we're gonna look at three passages, John 14, 21 through 24, Mark 12, 28 through 31, and Luke 10, 29 through 37. So go ahead and write Obey Christ at the top of your sheet if you haven't already done so. Underline it and write those three passages. John 14, 21 through 24. Mark 12, 28 through 31. And Luke 10, 39, 29 through 37. 
I'll give you a few moments to do so. For those of you who were obedient and waited. Yeah. <laughs> Have mercy. All right, I know some of you are still writing. Um, usually at the end of our time together, I'll tell you some of the particular ways that you can use this tool, because uh, I know that some of you are new to disciple making um, or to uh, what is more commonly called discipleship. And by that, I don't mean your own personal growth, but I mean leading others to grow. And so you're like, this is great and I love it. But when do I use it? How do I use it? I had a, a prolonged conversation with someone just recently um, where they're trying to navigate what does this look like to incorporate these things into their life and the different ways that they're already serving the Lord. Uh, but I want to share those with you up front. Um, so the first and most obvious is as part of the overall model. So whether it's somebody who is uh, new to the faith because you brought them into Christ or uh, the Lord brought you into their life uh, at the beginning of their journey. Um, you would use this as just you take them through uh, the model itself. Um, and again, you don't have to take them through it in order because these are pillars, not steps. These are tools uh, that you use uh, when the situation most calls for it. I can't think of a time that I have ever gone in order with an individual. And so you use it as part of the model as a whole. Uh, the second is if you think about what we're talking about as being a uh, kingdom of priests um, and just your call to be a priest, these are tools to minister to others, to minister to others. You heard Danzel talk about earlier just um, using it with one of his coworkers. And as needs arise, uh, you will, the Lord, if you will allow the Lord, he'll show you like, hey, this is a perfect opportunity uh, to take them through the no Christ tool so they can have a more clear understanding of who my son is. Or this is a perfect opportunity to take them through the obey Christ tool so that they can see uh, how much I love them and what I actually think about them versus what uh, the culture or their family or they themselves uh, think. But then lastly, um, you can also use this tool for yourself. Danzel had made mention in his testimony yesterday or this morning that he was in a low point uh, of the week and in his day, and he really needed to be reminded of his identity in Christ. So what did he do? He pulled out the tool and he used it for himself. Myself, I, um, as I was preparing for this, um, I'm just in the process of really seeking to grow in the Lord and just asking him, what does it look like for me to love you with all of my heart, all of my soul, all of my mind, and all of my strength? And as I was going through this tool, he gave me great clarity on a step to take and something to remove out of my life. Now, it wasn't sin. I even shared with somebody what it was that I was doing, and they're like, why would you need to remove that from your life? Um, and I said, because I don't want anything that would hinder me from hearing his voice, and that's just creating noise. And so it's something on the outside that would never have been seen to need to be removed. But the Lord is saying, if you want to love me with all of your heart, not just with your heart, but with all of your heart, what it would look like for you is to do this. And so these tools can be used as a model. They can be used to minister to others, but they can be used for yourself. And so the tool today is called Obey Christ. And I just want to state the obvious. The, I know that the topic of obedience is a very delicate one for many reasons. And this is something that I, I say to people when I'm sitting down with them and we're about to go through this tool, is I just state the obvious. I said, hey, today I want to take you through um, one the pillar in the model about obeying Christ. But I just want to acknowledge I know that the topic of obedience can be uh, very delicate for many reasons. I myself grew up in um, 
an, I'll just say an unhealthy home, uh, lots of abuse from the time as far back as I can remember. Um, so when I th think about obedience, some of my memories go back to that time. And it was a very, very, very dark time in my life, even as a young child. But then when I got saved, uh, my pastor taught me what it meant to fear the Lord. And how a healthy fear of the Lord would lead to great obedience and great obedience would lead to great blessing. And I've seen my life transformed by simply learning how to obey God and obey his word. And so obedience comes with great joy and delight and, 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 and stirs me up to, to look at my life and say, where can, where can I obey more? Um, and so this topic uh, is, not, is very nuanced for me in particular. So here's the question that I want to ask you, and I encourage you to ask others, even before you take them into the, the meat of the tool, is what comes to mind when you hear the word obedience or obey? And what has most impacted how you think about that topic? What comes to mind when you hear the word obey or obedience? And what has most impacted how you think about that topic? I shared with you two of mine. I want to give you a few moments to um, think about that and then to write down your answer. Well, I wish I could hear what your particular journey in this area looks like. Um, if we were sitting down again at, uh, at a coffee shop or a living room table, we might spend an hour talking about your journey before we ever even d dive into this. And we may not even get into the tool itself until the next time we get together. Because remember, good disciple making is not about running a person through a lesson, but it's about journeying alongside them. And so I, I, I wish that I could hear every one of your stories, um, but my hope is that uh, today Jesus and the word of God will help to bring a fresh perspective no matter what your background is. So in John 14, 21 through 24, Jesus actually shows us how love and obedience are directly tied together and how um, obedience leads to a closer relationship with God. We're going to read this passage together. And then we're going to talk about it just uh, for a moment. You guys ready? Let's read. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, John 14, 21 through 24. So these words from Jesus show us that obedience is the natural overflow of love, and it becomes the bridge to nearness with God. So for Jesus, obedience and love cannot be separated. Obedience is not a control thing about a control thing. It's not even totally about a lordship thing. It's about a love thing. So I want, to I want you to take a few moments to reflect. How does this passage impact your view of what it means to have a closer relationship with God? And let me add a little bit of clarity. The emphasis is on your view 
I really want you to look into your own soul with this, meaning I don't want you to uh, ask, what is this passage teaching? I want you to answer the question, how does it impact your personal view of what it means to have a close relationship with God? Go ahead and take a few moments to reflect and write. Now I want to give you a few moments to partner back up and share with your partner um, the responses that you wrote down for the two questions I asked. One, um, what comes to your mind when you think about the phrase or the word obey or obedience and what has most impacted your view? And two, how this passage in John 14 uh, impacts your view of what it means to have a close relationship with God. I just want to give you the liberty uh, to share um, as little or as much as you like. Again, I realize that this is a very delicate uh, situation, and so um, there's no pressure to get into any details. Uh, you can just give them a, a general, um, just a general uh, idea of your thoughts. Um, and then for the second pass, or the second question how it impacts your view of what it means to have a close relationship with Jesus. Uh, I just want to um, caution you to be mindful not to slip into teaching the passage. This is really about relationship. This is really about dialogue. And so just share your thoughts, share your feelings, share your heart. I'll give you five minutes to do that, and we're going to put the timer on the board now. So go ahead and partner up. All right. I know that that is not necessarily a lot of time to talk about something so uh, deep and um, maybe significant in our lives, but I hope that what it does do or did do was at least help you to see the power of dialogue. And I don't know about you guys, but for me... Um, it was healing to revisit how I think about obedience and why. And then to share that, um, it really helps um, with my soul. And so it goes back to what Terrence said. Um, conversation, relationship, dialogue, interaction really is a true, significant, impactful component of disciple making. So we learned in our John 14 passage that, um, yes, that's John 14, uh, 21 through 24, we learned from the passage that from Jesus that it is necessary to obey God in order to have a close relationship with him. So, and so in this pillar, we're going to look at what commandments are most important to obey. So the next passage we're going to read is Mark 12, 28 through 31. And in this passage, a religious leader asked Jesus that question, which is most important? And Jesus responds by giving him not just one, but two commands um, and says that there, are no, there is no, other, no greater commandment than these. Um, and these two are simply two sides of the same coin. So let's read the passage together, Mark 12, 28 through 31. Ready? Read. And one of the scribes came up. Mark 12, 28 through 31. So here Jesus says that the most important commandment is to love the Lord with all our heart, all our soul, 
all our mind and all of our strength. And that it's equally as important to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. So we're going to start by looking at what Jesus said about loving God. So if you don't already, I want you to draw uh, on your paper uh, a box that has four quadrants in it. And then make sure you're leaving enough space because you're going to draw another box and a heart. And you can feel free to draw them all out now if you want to just simply get the framework on your page. Again, you're just going to draw a box that's made up of four quadrants. And then another box that essentially has three pillars or three columns in it. And then you'll draw a heart. And you can feel free to write in there God and people. So the first element that Jesus calls us to love God with is with all of our heart. So we are in this first box going to draw a heart. And then underneath the heart, simply write the word heart. Now, the next element that Jesus calls us to love God with is all of our soul. So we're going to draw a little stick figure person here. And then underneath it, we're going to write the word soul. See, you don't have to be an artist to be a disciple maker. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. You guys have no idea how long it takes me to try to write this out legibly. Okay, so in the Bible, heart and soul are words that are both described to communicate um, the core of who we are. There's not like a real distinction between heart and soul, but when they're put together, it's like to say with all of who you are. So there's four major aspects of our, of our, of our being, of our core, of who we are, um, and that's our will, our affections, our desires, and our emotions. So I want you to write that kind of underneath the boxes. You know, normally I just write it out for you, but I didn't have confidence that I could do it legibly, so I said I'll do it early. Your will, affections, desires, and emotions. Will, affections, desires, and emotions. Just want to put, write that underneath your boxes and write a little asterisk to the left of will. So let's talk about what these four things mean. But first, uh, what I'm going to have you do is write a little acronym at the top of your box. It'll help us remember these words. It's the acronym WADE. W A D E. Gerald likes alliteration. I like acronyms. I think they're easier to remember. So you're just going to write the word Wade at the top of your boxes and then put a little asterisk by the W in the Wade just to remind you that this is connected to this. So let's break down what these mean. Our will is the part of us that decides what we will 
and will not do. Our affections are the things that we like and do not like. Our desires are the things that we want and do not want. And our emotions is how we feel. I will. Thank you. And I, I often say this in the beginning, so I apologize for not saying it. It'll be helpful for you later if you have um, the tool drawn out on one sheet of paper and your personal notes on another. If you've already mixed them up, don't worry. Just make sure you can delineate them so you know, like, okay, this is what I actually communicate to others, and this is, like, my own personal notes. So, again, our will... It's just what we will and will not do. Or will is what we, yeah, the part of us that decides what we will and will not do. The meaning is wrapped up in the word. Our affections are what we do and do not like. Just our likes and dislikes. Our desires are what we want and do not want. And our emotions are how we feel. So take some time to think about these four areas. Your will, your affections, your desires, your emotions. Which of these do you think God might be highlighting as an area where he wants more love and obedience. <laughs> Remember, the objective of this tool is to learn how to obey Christ. And obedience is rooted in love. And he wants us to love him with all of our heart and all of our soul. So we ask ourselves this question. Which of these do you think God might be highlighting as an area where he wants more love and obedience? And what action step can you take within the next 48 hours? And I'm going to have you write that out as an I will statement. So I'm going to give you a little bit of time um, to think this out and think this through. Uh, because I really want you to be able to hear from the Lord about this. So go ahead and reflect on the question, and again, write it out as an I will statement. How many of you felt like uh, you really heard from the Lord on that? Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's the goal. Every time I get up here, guys, I don't want you to hear from me. There's nothing that I'm going to say to you that's going to change your life and drive you to go out to make and multiply disciples. Like if we are not engaging with God in a serious and significant way, there no, should be no reasonable expectation for fruit. And I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I have zero desire to be known as a great teacher. My desire is to do everything that I can to equip you to respond effectively and well to the call to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind, and all of your strength. And to love your neighbor as you love yourself. And to go out and to make disciples. To baptize them and to teach them how to obey everything that Jesus taught you. But it has to start with your own personal level of engagement. And that's the very reason why we're doing this on a Sunday morning and not on a Wednesday night. Or why we're doing this um, at round tables and not as a sermon series. Because we want to give you every opportunity that we can for you to genuinely dialogue and engage with the Lord. And so I'm encouraged by um, some of that level of engagement that I saw going on.
Um, I'm going to give you a few moments to partner up, and I want you to share uh, with your partner uh, the answer to the questions of what, you, what area you felt like the Lord was highlighting as wanting more love and obedience, and share your I will statement with them. Um, as you're listening to the person share, listen for those two consistent things we're wanting to find in an I will statement, something that's measurable, that's tangible, that's objective, that can really be seen as whether or not they do it or don't do it. So if it's just like, oh, I'm going to be more nice or I'm going to, you know, I'm going to really press into wanting or desiring the things of God, that's good, um, but it's not measurable. Um, so help them kind of craft that a little bit better. Um, and then make sure they have a clear uh, step to take in the next 48 hours. And then um, if you feel comfortable, pray for one another. Um, we cannot do this on our own strength. And it's going to require um, us to pray and us to have people pray for us. So go ahead and partner up and share with one another. I'm going to give you about three minutes or so, so it won't be long, um, so kind of just get straight to the point. Okay, so we're going to, moving on. So if we look back at our passage, the third element that Jesus calls us to love God with is with all of our mind. So what I want you guys to do is in this third quadrant here is to draw just a little thought bubble. All right, just two little circles in a cloud and you're gonna write mind. Jesus calls us to love the Lord with all of our mind. Uh, so she asked the fourth box. Uh, quadrants actually go in a clockwise. What? They actually have a way that they work. And so, like, I know we read left to right, but quadrants actually go clockwise. It's a science thing. So, oh, well, maybe it's an English thing. I don't know. But that's just how they work. So I didn't skip a box. That's just how... How oh, they work. I actually had it the other way, and I had to change it because I was informed. That's not how quadrants work. Um, so our mind simply is the center of our thoughts. Our mind is the center of our thoughts. Another way to say it is our mind controls our thoughts. So here's the question. What do you think it looks like to love God with all of your mind? And here's my emphasis. Well, not mine, but Jesus's. With all of your mind. I'm going to give you a moment to think about that and write down the answer. Keep thinking and keep writing, but I'll just share this with you. I remember when I was first working this out. And writing, crafting out the questions. And the question initially was, what do you think it looks like to love God with all of your mind? And the Holy Spirit said, don't leave out the word all. And I said, yes, Lord. So what do you think it looks like to love the Lord with all of your mind? And again, if we were sitting together, we might spend 30 minutes talking just about this. We might spend... 45 minutes just talking about this. All right, so the final element that Jesus calls us to love the Lord with all of our strength. Now, our strength is simply our energy and abilities, like just what we have the strength to do. Um, so we're um, going to use the word, we're going to use a little symbol of like a lightning bolt here um, just to represent energy. And then you're going to write strength in the box.
Our strength is simply our energy and abilities. So what do you think it looks like to love the Lord with all of your energy and all of your abilities? Take some time to think that through and write it down. What do you think it looks like to love the Lord with all of your energy and all of your abilities? Okay, so moving on. Reflecting on mind and strength, which of these two do you think God is highlighting as an area to grow in greater love and obedience for him? Reflecting on mind and strength, these last two elements, which of these do you think God might be highlighting as an area where he wants more love and obedience? And again, what action step can you take within the next 48 hours? And write that down as an I will statement. Well, all right. We are getting ready to wrap up our time together. But my, my hope has been that as you dialogue with the Lord and ultimately express it to one another, your heart was stirred in some specific ways that you can grow in your obedience to Christ. Now, what you'll notice is that we didn't get into this uh, piece at all, and it's not because we ran out of time. It's because I want to continue to model for you guys that the goal of disciple making is not to run people through lessons. And so the next time we gather, we'll revisit this and look at the second aspect of what Jesus said uh, is the most important command to obey, um, to love our neighbor as we love ourselves and highlight three elements that are critical, just like we highlighted the four specific elements that Jesus mentioned in loving the Lord. So as we always do, I want to end with some follow-up exercises for you to do, not homework, exercises. Homework makes you frustrated. Exercise makes you strong. So my goal is to make you strong and not frustrated. I want to add some weight without adding some burdens. So we break it down into three parts. Share, pray, and obey. Share, pray, and obey. Share. Share the tool for someone that you feel comfortable with. Typically, when we have time, uh, we draw the tool back for one another. That's a critical, critical component um, of using these tools. So if we were sitting together, I would, have drawn, I would have shown you my notebook. I would have walked you through it so that you could draw it in your notebook. Then I would have had you draw it back for me. And here's why. Because when I uh, teach you the tool, you've now seen it once. When you draw it back for me, you've now seen it twice and done it once. If you do the follow-up exercise, you've now seen it three times and done it twice. So when the opportunity arises for you to use the tool, it's not something new for you. You have experience with the tool. And so we build the experience of disciple-making into the disciple-making. So a person leaves not just empowered, but they leave equipped. Uh, they leave not just empowered and not just equipped, but they leave experienced. And so because I, we uh, don't have the time always to get in the um, drawing back and forth for one another, it makes it even more critical for you to draw this out for someone you feel comfortable with. And I would even say... Um, as I mentioned before, to draw it out for yourself. These are tools that are not just designed to minister to others, but designed to minister to you by you. So the pray is to talk with the Lord about the areas that he's highlighting um, in your I will statement. Again, this is not a lesson. This is God saying, hey, 
I want more of your will. Like this stubbornness has to go. I want more of your mind. These distractions have to go. That's what he told me. He said, you're not watching or listening to anything bad, but they are noise that hinders you from hearing my voice. And so talk with the Lord about these things so they can really transform you um, and not just something, be something you learned at church. And then lastly, take steps to obey um, or fulfill your I will statement. And I always encourage you to get an accountability partner. Let somebody know, this is what the Lord spoke to me this weekend. Could you follow up with me at the end of the week to make sure I did it? And you have two I will statements if you notice that. The whole lesson will leave you with three. But you don't necessarily have to get them both done within that 48 hours. Ask the Lord, where do I start? Which one do you want me to prioritize first? Uh, Maybe you can do them both this afternoon. That's great. Don't procrastinate. Um, But I also don't want you to feel burdened like, oh, I've got two chores I got to do within the next two days. That's not what this is about. It's about just following the good shepherd into a life of love and obedience. So just ask the Lord, which one do I start with? So if you are uh, a parent of wonderful children, I want to release you to go get those wonderful children um, now. Encourage you. I know this is a very attractive place to fellowship, but get your children and then come back to fellowship. Um, I want to remind you guys that on our website, we have a button all the way at the bottom of the whole page. It says baptisms and discipleship. If you have questions about how to use these tools effectively, if you want a little bit of additional coaching, or especially if you have testimonies, please uh, use that as a way to reach out and we will get back with you. Um, And then if you will be kind and gracious um, to expeditiously kind of gather your things, we need to break the sanctuary down and get the chair set back up. Many hands make the work light. So if you have the ability to stay here in the sanctuary and over in the Eden Center, um, it'd be great to knock that out collectively and together. I want to thank you guys um, for your diligence, um, and I'm just going to pray a blessing over you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you shalom peace. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.